For some limits, the basic algebraic techniques we've discussed so far are not useful. But there is a powerful theorem which is sometimes useful in these situations, called the squeeze theorem. I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson where we prove this theorem. Today we'll take a look at the theorem, understand the gist of why it's true, and do a couple simple examples of applying it. Here is statement of the theorem. It's talking about limits as x approaches a point we're going to call c. Specifically, the theorem will let us conclude something about the limit of a function g of x as x approaches c, provided these conditions are satisfied, being that g of x lies between two other functions, f of x and h of x, for all x in an open interval containing the limit point c, except possibly at c itself where the values of the functions don't matter. So if g of x is between these functions around c, and the limits of those other two functions, f and h, if their limits are the same, say they're equal to some number l, then g of x, which lies between f and h, near c, must have that same limit at c. Its limit must also be l. A picture immediately brings into focus what the theorem is saying. We have this function g, which is what we're really concerned about, and its limit as x approaches c can be determined if g is squeezed between these two other functions. In the picture, it's f and h. Notice that g is not between f and h over here. g is, in fact, greater than both f and h. But if there's some space around this point c where g is squeezed between f and h, then at c, its limit must be the same as the limits of f and h, provided those limits are equal to some finite number. And remember, as we see in the statement of the theorem, it doesn't actually matter what happens at c. As usual, when we're thinking about limits as x approaches c, what actually happens at c is not relevant. So g, instead of taking on this value, could take on some other value at c. That would not change what the limit is. Now, let's try using this theorem to prove some simple limits, and we'll also look at some graphs of the functions we're discussing, and again see this sort of behavior in action. First, we'll show that the limit of x squared times sine of 1 over x, as x approaches 0, is equal to 0. This is a typical situation where the squeeze theorem can be useful. For starters, notice that we can't split up this limit of a product right, x squared times the sine function, we can't split that up into the product of the limits, because this guy's causing an issue. Sine of 1 over x, we can't plug 0 into that, because that would be a division by 0, and so we're left having to use some other strategy. None of the algebraic techniques we've discussed, like factoring and canceling or rationalizing, are applicable here, but the squeeze theorem is a great candidate, specifically because we have this trig function the sine function, which we know is always between negative 1 and positive 1. Don't let the strange input of 1 over x throw you off. It is still a sine function. It must be between negative 1 and positive 1. So we can start there with what we know, that sine of 1 over x for sure is at least negative 1 and at most positive 1. Now we should note that sine of 1 over x is not the function whose limit we're trying to evaluate. We're trying to evaluate the limit of x squared times sine of 1 over x. So then the question becomes, how do we change this into this? The answer is simple. All we have to do is multiply across the whole inequality by x squared. Then in the middle, we'll have x squared times sine of 1 over x, which is exactly what we want. So multiplying through by x squared, we have negative x squared on the left, positive x squared on the right, and in the middle, of course, is x squared times sine of 1 over x, precisely the function whose limit we're trying to evaluate. Then, as per the squeeze theorem, we have to check that the limits of the lower function and the upper function exist and are equal. That was part of the theorem. The limits of those lower and upper bounding functions 
They have to exist, and they have to be equal. Otherwise, the function g that lies between them would not be forced to share the same limit. The limit of negative x squared, the lower function, as x approaches zero, is zero. You can just plug zero in. Same thing with the upper function, which is positive x squared. Now, all hypotheses of the squeeze theorem have been satisfied. We have our function, x squared times sine of one over x, which does lie between this and this, and as x approaches zero, their limits are equal, and they are zero. Since this function is squeezed between negative x squared and positive x squared, and we see that their limits meet at zero, this function is forced to have the same limit, which is zero. This is a graph of the three functions at play. In red, we have x squared times sine of one over x, and you can see how nicely it's squeezed between negative x squared and positive x squared, and it's clear they're all approaching zero as x approaches zero. For another example, consider the limit of x to the four times cosine of two over x as x approaches zero. Again, we'll show that this limit is zero, and we can begin by noting Noticing the trig function involved, cosine of 2 over x, has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. That gets our inequality started, and as before, all we have to do is some multiplication to get this to match the function we actually want to prove something about. To turn this into this, we simply multiply through by x to the power of 4. Thus, on the left, we have negative x to the 4. On the right, we have positive x to the 4. And in the middle, as desired, we have x to the 4 times cosine of 2 over x. Now again, an important part of the squeeze theorem is having the limits of the bounding functions being equal, and of course they have to exist. So checking that, the limit of negative x to the 4 as x approaches 0 is 0, and same thing as the limit of the upper function. The limit of x to the 4 as x approaches 0 is also 0. Since these bounding functions have the same limit as x approaches 0, the function that's squeezed between them is forced to have that limit as well. And so, just as before, we can conclude that the limit of x to the 4 times cosine of 2 over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 0. And here's a graph of the involved functions. Again, you can see positive x to the 4, negative x to the 4, and x to the 4 times cosine of 2 over x, which is squeezed between them, and it's clear that they are all approaching 0 as x approaches 0. So that's the squeeze theorem and two straightforward examples of using it to evaluate a limit. Later, we'll use this theorem to evaluate a very fundamental trig limit, so look forward to that. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 1 course and Calculus 1 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Audio.